Hey everyone, Don here. It's uh, May the 1st, Sunday, almost 7 o'clock. So, uh, anywho, I'm uh, sitting here still working on the female version of uh, Han Solo. It's not done, obviously. And as you can also see, I've uh, changed up the composition. So, um, yeah. So, if I you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to last week's uh, post and then you'll see what it looks like. And uh, when it's done, then I will post it on my uh, drawing section of my YouTube channel. Uh, so you can see the whole, the full drawing of it and uh, see the process, the trials and errors I went through uh, to get this. But I think it's turned out pretty well. I'm pleased with it. And um, so yeah, hope you guys like it too. So yeah, my week uh, was pretty good. Um, you know, kind of uneventful at my real job, right? And once again, if you listen to my previous post, you know what I'm talking about when I say my real job. <laughs> anyway, um, it was what it was. Uh, 40 hours and uh, glad uh, it was over with so I could get back and get some drawing done uh, but it always seems to go by so quick my days off I work four 10-hour shifts so I get three days off and uh, this is my last day off so tomorrow I have to go to work and um, so I try generally get these uh, video blogs in on Sunday and uh, get them up to all of you out there who want to watch them. And let's see, what should we talk about? So many topics. Um, all right, well, let's talk about this. All right, I don't know if we'll cover the whole gambit of it, but uh, we'll, we'll start. And maybe we'll uh, finish up on another one, but let's talk about tracing. All right, is it a good thing, is it a good, <laughs> is it a good thing, is it a bad thing? Uh, is there a place for it? Um, can you abuse it, can you overuse it? yada 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 um I don't think there's really a, a right or wrong answer let me just first say that um yeah I trace I'll trace an image you know what if uh if I'm crunched for time man and I need to get something out quick and I need to nail it the first time and I just can't sit down and noodle out the details um, in a timely fashion and then by golly you know what I'm going to trace that sucker alright so yeah hi my name's Don and I'm a tracer <laughs> okay but anyway with that said also there are times when I don't I feel that uh, it can become a crutch and you can become dependent on it. So, um, let's use this image as an example. All right, you see these three, you got this full standing figure right here. Uh, you got the hero shot of her face. And then you got this action pose uh, of her aiming her blaster out to a uh, unseen target. So, one of the three I traced. All right. So I'm going to let you decide which one it was. And if you think you know, well then by golly, you can leave a comment below. And uh, we'll tally up and see how many are right. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, you know, there used to be, and there probably is uh, some places, uh, and who you talk to, and whatever, a stigma attached to, uh, to tracing. And so uh, I, I feel that there shouldn't be a, a that. I mean, not everybody can trace. You know, I've traced and, uh, you know, I used to get ribbed for it. And I said, well, okay, hey, you trace. And it's not as easy as people think it is. You know, still, as an artist, you're, you're trying to sketch out the key elements that you're going to need for your final illustration. And those proportions got to remain correct and uh, the placement. And you would think tracing would solve all that problem, but not necessarily so. And then what are you going to do after your tracing? You know, you still got to render it out, right? There's still a lot of shading that has to be done. I mean, the values, the highlights, the shadows, the midtones. You know, so, um, yeah. But then again, I think uh, also one could fall into the trap that um, that's all they do. They just rely on the quick fix. And um, I, I kind of found myself doing that, where I just took it for granted that, um, you know what, hey, I get a job, all I got to do is trace it. And so my actual drawing skills suffered. Believe it or not, you know, that old adage, you either use it or you're going to lose it. And drawing, at least in my experiences, is not like riding a bicycle. You just can't jump back into it. You need to develop those uh, skills. You got to sharpen them back up. And so um, I found myself doing that. And when I really wanted to sit down and draw, I was frustrated as all I get out. I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on here, man? And it was just because I sat down and I, let's just say I was sitting down at every project and would just trace the sucker out and then just you know render it there's no big whoop just render it out and my actual drawing skills they suffer for it so as of late uh, I've really been making an effort to uh, really correct that well correct maybe not the right word because you know it's I used to feel like I'm doing something terribly wrong and it needs to be corrected. I'm, I'm just saying I uh, started to uh, realize how important it is to actually sit down and draw what I see. And uh, get my eye and hand coordination back up to snuff so to speak because really that's basically what drawing is I mean you've got really acute eye and hand coordination because you are relaying uh, the information that you see from one image to your hand and then you're recording that information back onto another piece of paper or in my case onto this computer screen and um, so it's really eye-hand coordination and that only comes by practice. You have to develop that. And that takes time. And it gets better over time. You're able to um, sketch out 
what you see quicker and quicker each time. And uh, so, yeah. So, all of you out there, you know, first of all, let me just say, you know, if someone tries to slam you for tracing, uh, don't feel bad. Everybody does it. And uh, everybody has done it. And just about everybody will continue to do so. Um, but also, don't rely on it every time. Uh, get out of that uh, rut, so to speak, or draw outside the box. Whatever, however you want to label it. But um, get outside your comfort zone. If you find yourself doing tracings all the time, put it aside, you know, and just sit down and sketch and draw. There's a lot of resources on, on the internet now where you can actually um, get um, gesture models and they're timed so that uh, you can have them on a screen. I think YouTube has them up somewhere. And then you can set the time to 30 seconds to quick gestures, two minute drawings, I think even up to 30 minute studies if you wanted to. And then um, use those. Those are quite useful. A lot of fun to and then uh, save your drawings. Compare them to um, when you first start out. Make an effort to try to maybe do a week's worth. Try to do maybe four or five gesture drawings each day and then go back and compare from when you first started. I think you'd be surprised, pleasantly surprised, at uh, how much more confident you'll be and um, how much more, uh, you know, your drawings will flow. So give it a shot. So anyway, enough of that. To trace or not to trace. I say trace if you feel like you need to, uh, but don't let it be the only thing you do. Get out there and uh, draw what you see. You'll have fun with it. You really will. I don't know, maybe one of these days I'll have to do a video where I break down um, how, how I would sit down and draw, say, a face, character face, or a body. Or maybe how I incorporate a uh, grid system. I, uh, sometimes I even challenge myself. I'll even uh, use, <coughs> excuse me, either a... Uh, a large grid pattern or a smaller grid pattern, just depending on, you know, how much I really want to kind of challenge myself. Obviously, the smaller the pattern, you know, the more uh, actual detail you're going to get within each square. So you have a lot more reference points to guide you throughout a, uh, a drawing. Um, the larger the squares, then obviously those are going to have to uh, Sorry, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I was noodling there. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, larger the squares, you know, they're going to obviously encompass a lot more area of your subject matter. So, with that, you're going to have to use it and train yourself to hit just key elements that lie within that one specific square and then as it leads into the adjacent square 
and then you uh, create your full image from that so uh, yeah maybe I'll I'll do a video of that if there's any interest I guess first I have to generate some interest just with these I will see still fun to do even if hardly anybody listens to them <laughs> oh my goodness um, yeah maybe someday uh, but this is turning out pretty good man um, did I mention I uh, maybe I didn't because I know I started and stopped this goofy recording a couple of times um, but did I mention got an email from an old client to uh, work on a freelance project it's going to be a good one if I get it so I got to after this I got to sit down and finish writing out the proposal as far as the bid is concerned and uh, get that submitted tomorrow but yeah it looks like it's going to be a good one and if they approve my bid um, the time frame is of such that I may have to take a leave of absence from my real job just so I can get it finished in time but that's a good thing I'd much rather draw and paint than anything so yeah wish me well of course by hopefully by next week uh, blog I'll have good news in that regards we'll see what happens right so anyway uh, what are your thoughts on tracing you have any negative thoughts positive thoughts indifferent so like I said you know I don't think this has really a right or a wrong um, answer to it um, everybody has their own workflow and if it meets their workflow well, by all means go for it and uh, like I said I I used it quite a bit particularly when I was under some pretty tight deadlines and things just needed to get done does that make me a bad person? no it doesn't make you a bad person Hey, but one thing though, here's the deal. All right. You know, I've seen some videos out there, some terrific artists, and it's, you know, and they'll do paintings, whether it be traditional paintings or colored pencil drawings or even uh, digital illustrations. And, you know, and they, and they start out with drawing already drawn and the image is already there right okay and I don't know don't get me wrong I may be wrong on this whole thing but it's almost like they're embarrassed to show the process of them getting the drawing done was it because they traced it hmm possibly well, then, if that's the case, then just show that you traced it and and move on, get over it. You know? My goodness. I mean, because, you know, there's a lot of viewers out there who would probably be curious to know how the initial image got on the page in the first place and would ask, you know, some advice on that. And if you just tell, well, you know, I just saw a photo on the internet or 
I had something laying around, so I scanned it in and I traced it. Okay, well then, say that. You know, don't make it a big mystery. Don't make yourself out to be something that you're not. I mean, my goodness. And because um, there are there are a few I would see, and. I could tell by the initial drawing that it had been traced. And like I said, I'm, I don't care. But other people, they, they want to know, hey, how, how'd you get that one drawing in place? And there was one fellow I've watched for quite some time. He's a terrific artist. Uh, does a lot of really cool pencil illustrations and uh, he does uh, some really nice paintings and you know I would never see him start out but to his credit um, he listened to one of his uh, subscribers and they asked hey how do you get your drawings on your paper or on your illustration boards and you know he did a quick demonstration and showed so kudos to him uh, it was awesome and he incorporated not really the, a grid but uh, he had a unique way I never tried it and I may try it in the future just to see how that goes I'm always up to trying something new but he what he would do is mark I guess if I remember right an area on the page and then make an X across this whole um, drawing surface. And then with that, that gave him the uh, starting point of where his illustration was going to be. So I thought, well, that's pretty unique. I'd never tried that before. So maybe on my next uh, drawing, I may incorporate that and <laughs> see how I do. And I'll give him credit for that technique <laughs> if it turns out. If it doesn't, then I'm you know, giving credit for being, giving me. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I just won't say it. No. He, he's a good guy. And I will try that technique. I always want to try something new and different. So anyway, um, I like how this is turning out. I uh, hope to get it finished by uh, next week. And then I will post a, uh, a video. I think I've already said that. A video of the whole drawing process. I don't know. And then I was trying to think whether or not I would do a commentary on top just to kind of show what I did. There are a few little tips, techniques that I've kind of stumbled upon while using this program. I really like this program. I know I've said it before, but uh, I'm going to say it again. I like this program. Uh, I've never really gave it as much attention as I have been lately. And there's just some really cool features about it I like. And, and the thing is, also, I haven't even scratched the surface of this program. I've only stuck with, um, alright, the tool I'm using right now, pencil. It's called the Real 2B Pencil. And then uh, I've used the uh, airbrush just for some splatter and uh, speckling effect. And then also to go in and soften some of my pencil strokes in here. Just kind of use it as a nice soft blending aspect without really using a blender. Um, what else? Uh, watercolor. I've used watercolor 
on here. And uh, basically, that's it. I've used the glaze now and again. Uh, I think I used the glaze with uh, my Ragnar Lothbrook drawing. And I think I might have used the glaze on Rick Grimes. Huh. That was kind of cool. It kind of went in and uh, it softened up areas. So, and I may I may use the glaze on this one as well. Um, I might, like I said, when I uh, release the video of this drawing, when it's finally com completed, I'll, uh, maybe I'll do this commentary or maybe just throw in some annotations um, where points of interest need to be uh, addressed. We'll see. I don't know. Um, that's right reading right there. That's how it's going to be because she is right-handed, not left-handed. Um, you know, I think the, the focal point, you see her, you know, your eye comes down to the action shot, you follow her arm, you come up, so, and you see the full standing view, and you got this nice flow for the composition. Even though she's looking off the page, you know, your eye comes back down to here, and with her arm pointing back here, and yeah, it's shooting off the page, but then you've got the white of her shirt up here that leads your eye back up. So, it's looking pretty good. I like the composition as well. Anywho. Yep. So, oops. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, that may do it. Kind of short, but... Um, maybe not even to the point but just sort of threw a question out there and um, so let me know what you think if you got uh, any opinion on tracing um, I'd like to hear them and again um, I say um a lot don't I huh Anyway, if you can tell me which one of these three I traced, leave the comments. I'd like to know if you can figure out which one I did. Alright? Well, I guess that would be about it. Um, like always, um, click like if you liked. Share if you think other people would like it. And uh, subscribe if you would like to stay in touch. I hope you found this helpful, useful, maybe incitive. Um, if nothing else, you know, I, I broke up uh, a moment of boredom in your life. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tell you goodbye for now, and uh, we'll see you next week.